podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Hello everyone, welcome along to the Rangers Rabble Women's Show. My name's Brian, the host tonight. I am joined again by Rolf, Carr and Laura. How are we folks? All right. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yes, the, 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 the mood's slightly low, as you can imagine. Of course, we're reacting to the game yesterday with Rangers for Heart, uh, Partick Thistle nil. But more importantly, we lost out on goal difference, but the goal difference was quite significantly higher than... Uh, we wanted so it was obviously a, a a big task for the ladies yesterday to you know to get the title because obviously they were have, either having to score a barrel load of goals or get a, a hand from him so it, it nearly happened it was getting to the point where you thought it was going to happen and then it didn't happen so uh they just finished second on goal difference so wolf kicking sort of the season as a whole league season, um, how do you how do you assess it? Do you want me to be brutally honest? Mm-hmm. We absolutely chucked it away. We were in the box seat, we had it in our hand, and we blew it. We absolutely blew it. It's not on the face of it. There was a fairly a fairly decent season. If as we all hope, we we'll, we'll lift the, the Scottish Cup on Saturday, make it a cup double. That on the face of it looks good. But as one of the players said yesterday, and I won't name her after the game, we'd swap both those medals for a championship. Because it's all about the league. The league, what it's about, that's a bread and butter. We were in the box sheet, and quite frankly, we blew it. I mean, we lost. We lost. We lost a game of Hearts that we should never have lost. We drew a game with Partick Thistle that we should never have drawn. Won either of the two of them. We've won the league handily. We should have won the league weeks ago. Because if we win either of them, we don't. We don't draw with that lot at Broadwood two weeks ago. We go and beat them because they come out and have to attack us. And if they have to attack us, we'll beat them because we're a better team than them. That's the goal and thing. He's been the best team in the league by a country mile. And that's not what Blue Tinted Specs are. We are the best team. We've got the best players by a country mile. And for the second year, they're over, we've blown the league. And it's Rangers are about winning league titles. I mean, I know Joe, I know Joe said after the game yesterday that if the center when she come in, you'll, take, you'll get two cups and lose the league on goals. If she'd have taken that. I'd like to think of that attitude that that's changed now because she's been at the club for a season and she knows that that's not, that's not good enough. She did also say that you know nobody's ever done the treble and it would be great to be first to do it. It would, but we'll have to we'll have to win leagues. Leagues is what it's all about. Um, I don't like to say it because it's, it, it's tough to accept, but we absolutely threw that away. Uh, gave it our best shot yesterday. We thought Hibs had done us a massive favour. It was so deflating um, for Celtic to score so late because obviously we were all just at, we were all at Broadwood just waiting for them to score because they always score. And then when it was getting towards 90 minutes, we thought, well, maybe today's the day they're not going to score. And unfortunately, they scored. Yeah, Lauren, it's been a bit of a strange season. You, 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 we build up such a significant lead and everything seems rosy. And then all of a sudden, two results go against us. And all of a sudden, it all changes. We're chasing. And it was just too, late, too little too late in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, when you think you only lose two games and you've still got the league title at the end of the season, it's kind of hard to take. But as Wolf touched on, players are obviously worth the league title was the one they were wanting. Tess said in her post match perfectly that Celtic never won it. We handed them it because we were in the driving seat for so long and to no end up with it when we've only lost two games. And it was two games that we really shouldn't have lost, even the game against them. We could have easily done a season unbeaten and had a treble, but for a couple of silly mistakes that were made, a couple of really poor results that shouldn't have been, because we're we're better in the games, we're better overall, but it's just the way things work out and it's really difficult to take, but we pushed all the way, but we should have, we should really have two, two titles in the bag already and be going for our third one. Sunday. Yeah, I mean, cards. You know, it's a, it's never easy losing a league, but losing it in the manner that it happened, I think, makes makes the sort of not winning the league even worse. As, as Laura and Wolf have just said, you know, we were ahead for so long, we had such a big lead, and then if you'd lost it by a point, you could say, right, okay, 
a point, but goal difference is galling, isn't it? I mean, it feels worse than last year to me, and yep, last year we came third, so that's saying something, the fact that we came second on goal difference, and it feels worse than last year does, but purely because we were so far in front, we were six points ahead at one point, and that Hearts 1-0 game right before the split, that's where it all started to unravel, that's where things started to go wrong. And the game against them that we did end up losing Cathy's out injured and not having a centre-back that we could fully trust, Lisa having to come in and play 90 minutes when she hadn't played for, you know, how many games before that she hadn't got any minutes. That's where it all just kind of fell apart. But it's obviously gutted. You don't ever want to lose, like, come second, but not to them. Glasgow City don't mind. They've been the forefront of women's football for however many decades at this point. So it didn't feel so bad when they won it, but the fact that they've done it just hurts all that much more. But, you know, Joe's first season as manager, she changed everything about the club when she's come in. So I'm sure she probably didn't think that she would get this far, but it's just, she's got in the way that it ended. And as well said, and Laura said, we basically handed it to them because we didn't show up that Hearts game that we ended up losing pathetic goalkeeping mistake and just couldn't put a shot anywhere other than the keeper's hands. It's essentially what cost us and then not being able to break down a low block against Park Thistle. It's just one of those things. So it's something that really needs to be addressed in the summer with recruitment. Really need to work on getting stronger. You know, we need another centre back and all that for a fact. We need probably another goal scorer, whether we bring Laura Berry back and use her because Rio's you know, dipped in form. Kirsty's come back into form, but it's a little bit too late now at this point for her to come back into form. So, you know, we really need to recruit strongly if we want to have a chance in Champions League. I'm not saying we're going to win it, but it'd be nice to get a little bit further than we did last time. And we really need to push on for the league at least or a treble next season. But, I, but yeah, I, well, just, to pick, to, just to pick up on Alan's point here, I'll just to say, all, yeah. All we missed too many chances, only four players and double figures. Before we come on, I had a look at the, the final league, league standings. And we only lost two, but so did they. And we both drew four and we both won 26. So the record's exactly the same. We both, both Rangers and Celtic lost 18 goals. It's the goal scored that's killed us because they've scored 13 more than us. It's not like we'd scored about the same and they'd, they'd be better than the defence. The defence has been exactly the same. It was 18 goals each we conceded. So it's a fact, as Alan says, we just we just don't score enough goals. Missed far too many chances. We're not. But having said that, looking through the results back to just before the split, they haven't gone out and obliterated anybody. It's not like like they've taken part of Thistle apart at a game, or they've you know they put five they put five past starts. That's probably as good as it's got for them after the split. So it's the fact that they've been scoring fours and fives, and we've only been one and one nothing with two one. You know I mean that that's really what's killed us. Which is to Alan's point that you know we haven't been clinical enough in front of goal. And as Carl says, we need to address that. We need to get a goal scorer in. Hopefully, it is Laura Berry because that means it's. Somebody that's already in the building, if you like. I know she's out on loan, but you get the point. Laura, you know, when you when Wolf speaks like that and the, the goal scoring sort of lack of well, compared to certainly lack of goals, we've got, we've got Sarah, Sarah Ewins, we've got Kirsty Howitt, we've got uh, Rio Hardy, and we've got Jane Ross. Now, for me, there's not very many better four strikers out there. Maybe you could maybe say Sarah struggled a wee bit, she hasn't had much game time, but certainly the other three, um finishing wise, there's not many better. So where's where you know what I'm you know, where does the you know, how do you assess that sort of front line now? I don't think it's the uh, they're all obviously individually really good at scoring and like Sarah Yudes had came in, had a couple of knocks. Then Kirsty Howitt got her injury, went out, so then it started to get really disjointed. And I think the biggest blow was that we any went got injured, and she was the one that was pulling the strings, pinging balls about, were in such good form when she was there, and she went out, and it took us a while to adjust to her being out of the team. And I think that that's when the goals kind of started to fall away, and then Kirsty Howitt got injured, so then the kind of partnership with her and Rio Hardy was there and Rio kind of struggled to adjust. She just got so used to Kirsty being there and had like this like telepathic, they knew where each other was, they were setting each other up, they were scoring. And so it just became a bit disjointed and that's when obviously Celtic have kind of overtained probably in the goals once we've kind of lost Kirsty and then we obviously had injuries to Rachel McLaughlin at that. We've had 
we really are lucky, I think, with injuries and it kind of made the team disjointed and they kind of had to adjust to that. But it should be sad that they are able to adjust to. But I think more than the front line, it was when Kirsty McLean got injured, that was the biggest loss. And if she had probably stayed, been able to stay fit, more probably sitting here in a much happier mood than sitting with a league title. Is it, I'm trying to word this right, is it, is it too simplistic to say that Kirst, Kirsty McLean went out? That's you know when it, you know when it got, all got, sort of went downhill. I mean, um, I mean Rio's obviously went off the boil for a, a wee while now. Um, it's just, it's very puzzling, isn't it, Car? Because it's just they get, they got themselves in the, the position that they would have dreamt of, and then it just disintegrated, didn't it? Yeah, I don't know if it's a combination of all of the injuries and just kind of we seem to have a few at the same time and I don't know if that and then Joel was kind of mixing up a little bit in terms of who was playing, you know, and the midfield to she figured out who the best combination was, saying well up front she changed it every so often. But I don't know, even, you know, the start of the league campaign when we were battering, you know, Montrose, Park Thistle, Hearts, we were... It wasn't coming from one or two strikes. It was coming from all over the pitch. I think at one point we had seven different goal scor scorers in one one game. I think Kirsty Howitt scored two. So it's never been the case. It's always been the strikers that are scoring all the goals. They come from everywhere. And that just kind of slowed down. And even the game yesterday will come on to it. But we missed so many chances yesterday that should have been goals. And we were just hitting them high and wide. And that's just the story of the season. Then we get Tibbs midweek. It was just atrocious the amount we were just putting in the goalie's hands and missing and then we let we give away two cheap goals and ultimately that's what it's come down to so it's just i don't know if they just thought that it was over it was fine we'll be fine we'll figure it out and then it just kind of slipped away from them expecting that Celtic wouldn't pull ahead i don't know what it is but it's just one of those things that really needs to be addressed and it's looking like we're going to have to almost go unbeaten or at least draw games against them and you have to batter every other team for it for you to win this league yeah, <clears throat> totally agree. Um, we'll go on to obviously yesterday, uh, yesterday's game. Wolf, Victoria Singles, Nick Doherty, Cathy Hill, and Tess Midak in the defence. We had Lizzie Arnott, Kirsty McLean, uh, Chelsea Cornett, Mia McCauley, and Olivia McLaughlin in midfield. We then had Rio Hardy and Kirsty Howitt up front. So it seems again, Kirsty McLean making a sort of first start for a good while. Wolf, the the it was a good, a, a, for me, that's a, a really good three midfield that, you know, Kirsty, Chelsea and Olivia. Yeah, it's a, it's a great midfield. I mean, we could have done with, with Rachel Rowe, as, as Graham said in the comments. You know, Rowe being injured, we'll, we'll lose a wee bit of creativity. But I mean, I start, I start to pick up from the the um, the Women's Supporters Group podcast, because Alan's good, Alan's always good for a start, is that uh, that, that we, we in his, you know, level top assist for us when she was out for four months. That just tells you how much we missed Kirsty McLean. You know, going back to the previous conversation, though, she she's she was she's she was level on the assist because assists now matter. In my day, assists were just just give the boy the ball, the boy or girl the ball, but that was the way it was, you know. But I mean, you know, that tells you how much we've missed her. But having her back starting was brilliant, especially the next week in mind. I mean, having any backs is great, but it probably was the strongest team we could have had out because obviously. I mean, uh, rui has got an injury. She says it's not too bad, but we'll wait and see how next week pans out. Um, but again, touching on what Carl said, we missed a heart full of chances yesterday. But yesterday wasn't about scoring goals because there's not a chance on earth we were turning the goal in the front zone. There's no, there's no way we were putting 20 goals past Patrick this one, which is well. You know what I mean? Because they're too, they're too good aside for that. You know what I mean? And we're not a good enough side to do that. And it wouldn't be, it, to be honest, it wouldn't be good for the game anyway if we did do that. But it would have been nice. But we did, we did a professional job. Yes, did what we had to do. Scored some really, really good goals. I mean, I know we'll get to them one by one, but the last goal uh, was just tremendous. I mean, Liv really, really wanted that. Um, but yeah, we, we missed some chances, scored some goals. Story of the season, a 4 nothing winner on the face of it is is great, but it could have been it could have been eight, it could have been nine. You know I mean? But we'll have to set up for four. Say they, they were decent goals, never really looked in any danger. I mean, I could probably have been in goal. And would st still be a clean sheet because well, I mean they offered absolutely nothing, but they no there's nothing on the table for them. So yeah, very much so. Um, a little comment here from Paul. Um, you know, I'll be interested to see how Joe puts Iniesta and Rowe together. Yeah, 
absolutely, that'll be um, quite mouth-watering next season to see that pair link up. Um, and Laura, we'll go to the first goal. Um, Kirsty Howitt on target again. Long ball from Tess through the over the, over the top of the defence. Kirsty controls it and then a nice little neat finish into the, the far corner. Yeah, I've watched the goals back just before we came on and the ball for Tess was absolutely beautiful. She couldn't have placed that any better if she tried. And you just kind of wish that that had happened more often because it was more Nick that's been doing the kind of balls. But Tess kind of played out with her, another position that she's been playing. But yeah, lovely ball over and Kirsty, how that's her bread and butter. She's going to stick that away nine times out of ten. And good for her to get a wee goal on her birthday and then she ended up getting another one as well so it was a good day for her for that aspect but I'm sure she would have preferred to be celebrating harder afterwards Yeah absolutely and then Tess turned goal scorer car, uh, corner came in it was half sort of or poorly sort of cleared by the party defence and really good volley from uh, Tess into the far, the far corner it is. She just waits and waits until it's just at the perfect position for her and she just volleys it in. Tess hasn't scored a lot of goals this season, but from what I remember, the ones she has scored have been beautiful, good goals from her. So, you know, I'm sure she enjoyed that. You know, assist turn to goal scorer is always good for our players to get in and amongst it. So it's just another great goal. And yesterday was full of good goals. Um, but as I keep saying, we, we need to score more than we have just to always be negative. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then a third one before half time. Wolf, uh, Lizzie Arnott providing a uh, assist for uh, Kirsty Howitt again, getting her second of the afternoon. Uh, don't quite know what the park defence were quite doing, but Kirsty Howitt was on her, all on her own and took controlled it and then stuck it away. There was a lot of said about the first goal. That's that's food and drink to that's, that's food and drink to, to Kirsty Howitt. You know what I mean? That's. I mean, that's, that's food and drink, the birthday cake, the cherry, the top of it, the whole lot for her. I mean, she'll, she'll score them all day. I mean, she'll, she'll score them all day, every day, because one one thing she is, is she's a goal scorer. You know I mean, give, give her a chance within shooting range of the box and she'll, she'll take it. You know what I mean? And three and a half, that was, that was as nice, as I said, that was as nice and comfy. That was her job done. It was just a case of waiting to see what happened across, across town. Yeah, definitely. And as Will said earlier, Laura, the, or I think he's all said, the last goal was a a really good team goal, um, build up from the left hand side. I think Sarah, when you look at it, Sarah Ewan's has got her back to goal. You think there's nothing, there's nothing quite on, and then she lays it off to Liv McLaughlin, who just powers it into the back of the net. Yeah, Liv was absolutely screaming for the ball, and I think she was determined to score yesterday because she had a couple of shots in the first half, and then she was kind of like beating herself up a bit as she was walking away, as if oh, just really wanted to score. So she was screaming it. So Sarah had absolutely no option whatsoever than to pass the ball there, and she <laughs> struck it away lovely. And I think she was quite, was quite happy with herself. She was jumping into everybody's arms and celebrating like she just won the World Cup, but yeah, it's just. It's been such an asset to the team because she's came up for uh, Aston Villa and she's really taken on what it means to be a Rangers player. And she's just done absolutely tremendous. And I really hope that we can keep her next season, get her up for another loan. Or if she's really enjoyed it, as she seems to have, she might come up permanently. Who knows? Car, would that be a, 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 a really sort of dream signing? I mean, one of them. I've got a few in mind that I would love, but obviously, <laughs> realistic. <laughs> well, I love would be, you know, number one priority. Get her back up the road for another season loan, or if, you know, she's not one of these players that demands a lot of money and we can afford to sign her on permanently, I'd absolutely love it because her and Chelsea in the midfield when any has been out have been a powerhouse. It's just been incredible to watch them develop and adapt and play so well together. So if all three of them are together for the majority of next season, it would be an incredible, like nobody would get through the midfield. It would just, you know, it would be amazing. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I'm hoping and praying that we manage to keep her and then get a few more up the road. So, as Graham's a suggestion, can we use Champions League money to get Liv? But that's on the board to make that decision, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We need absolutely. to do well in it first. I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah. I guess it would be in that way. Well, I also don't know how much money you get for the Champions League, for it, if it's actually going to be that. It depends. I think if you're hosting it, you get more, but we want it for yeah. holiday, so I don't know if we're going to have that much money to kind of play a bit with the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Hey, John's got a question. Um, who do we see leaving? And um, this is a big one, obviously, because um, 
I think it's well known that in women's football they don't get, you know, three like the men's do. They don't get two, three, four. Well, they may get two, but you certainly don't get the three, four, five-year deals like you do in the men's. So is there is there sort of rumours or sniffs that some any any of the the girls are leaving? There's not there's not been anything that I've heard of anybody that's leaving. I'd like to think that's that's conversations that they'll have after after next week because obviously, you know, the league season's done, but we'll get a massive game next Sunday. Because I mean the the kind of the murmur yesterday was well at least we'll, we'll, we'll win two cups but I mean it's not it's not it's not a given that we win on Sunday given that one of our only two defeats this season was against next week's opposition I mean it's okay it's a game we should have won but that's football you know what I mean so hopefully hopefully we do that and you know winning winning two cups and having Champions League and okay winning the league's what, what, what we're really here for but you know. If there's anybody on the on the verge, I think well, they'll maybe want to move, they'll maybe stay. I mean, for example, I, before she got injured, I'd have been surprised if any was here next season. However, she's just back from injury, and she's got a chance of playing Champions League. I think she might she might stick around. Mm. Well, just to, to sample Champions League, just to show to showcase how good she is, because that will get her a better move. That might get her a move to like a, a really really big club as opposed to a big club or a club in a like a kind of maybe a mid table. You know, English club. It might get a move to a big, a big English club like a, like a Chelsea. I'm not, I'm not saying Chelsea, but something of that level. You know, that, that's competing at the, at the biggest level. So, because she'll never get, and she'll never, never play for a bigger club than the one she's at now. But you know, so I think that that might tempt her to stay. The fact that we have got Champions League because she's never done Champions League, and there might be other players in the same in the same boat that we're possibly thinking about going. It might also help us get by the likes of live. You know, we're also speaking to Olivia Banks yesterday. She's like, it's not my decision to make. You know, it's you know the, the encouraging thing for me from that we've heard from all the players is that they've said it's a great dressing room. The teammates are fantastic, mm. right? Now they'll obviously they'll, they'll all have pals in football. So you know, if anybody's getting sounded out, they'll speak to them and say, "What was it like at Rangers? Great dressing room." That's what you need to hear because you need that. You know, yeah. rather than well, it's toxic, or they've got a few problems, few bad eggs, and then. Every single one you speak to, whether they're a permanent player or a player on loan, they always reference how good the dressing room is. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win anything. But it's a good starting block. Has that been the big difference, Laura, this season, that the the harmony in the dressing room appears a lot better? I mean, I mean, I don't think it's any secret that there was a few issues towards the end of last season. Um, and I think Joe's done a, a really good job in sort of Getting everybody on side again, um, you know, getting everybody around, going in the same direction, pulling in the, you know, pulling their weight, and you know, everybody's enjoying playing for her, aren't they? Yeah, and I think if anybody was, they're going to toe the line. Joe was going to have them straight at the door anyway, so it was kind of, this is my plan. Do you want to stay? Do you want to go? She got rid of the ones that had kind of caused maybe some issues last year, and then everybody, she said that everybody for day one bought in. Yeah, and you can see that with the way they've obviously played for the majority of the season, obviously not got the result that we wanted with the league, but they've gave her everything that they can, as much as they can. And she, as she said, um, in some of her interviews and that, that you'll actually see what the team is like that she wants next season, because this was kind of a bedding in season. They're mm-hmm. getting used to a new system, getting used to kind of being more versatile and playing in different positions of that. So. It's, it's already exciting. I think next season, what's going to happen? I think she's already going to have contracts sorted. That um, she'll have been in her wee black bookie, players and friends for England caps, no doubt. So we'll probably see a few new faces, a, quite a few departing, maybe a few surprises departing. And it'll be all, all steam, everybody on board next season, full steam ahead and collecting more trophies next season. One of those players that we're speaking about, Laura, and I'll come to you on this because it's obviously a, a player that's close to your heart, Laura Berry. She's been out on loan at Motherwell. She's done really well. She had a Player of the Year or Player of the Month award, sorry, recently. Um, was that a season? She, she obviously needed that season to get first team football, you know, to play every week. Do you see her making any inroads in the first team at Rangers next season, or is that a still a wee bit too early, or is or is it a case of, you know, she's good enough just, you know, get her in the team? 
I think the likes of Kirsty McLean and me and Macaulay have shown if you're good enough, then Joe's going to trust in you. Even Ailey Austin, you know, she's um, Joe wanted her around to kind of understand what it's like to be in the first team. So Laura Berry obviously had a few games and then she's still, what was she, 15, 16 at that time. So obviously did need the experience, but she's went and absolutely smashed her loan at Motherwell. I think she's, she's helped them get like 11 games and beat her in a row. She's had Player of the Month awards and that, so she's definitely went out and showed what she can do and whether Joe kind of wants her in there next season, I suppose it will depend if maybe Jane or I Sarah Ewan's leaving with that space kind of filled or she might go back out on loan again because she is still fairly young, but I think she's good enough to start for us or at least even be in the squad kind of on the bench coming on and making a difference, but Okay, we'll just need to wait and see. But if it was me, I would definitely have her in amongst the team and getting used to being in that dressing room. And we'll come to the chief executive of the Laura Berry Supporters <laughs> Club, Car. Um, do you do you see her making inroads in the first team next year? I would have brought her back in December. We could have done with her to be honest. She would have banged them in for fun, and we might have won this league. No, I'm joking. I'm not actually joking. I do mean that. But she was obviously needing that time. She was away with Scotland under 19s and absolutely smashed it. With Motherwell, she just seemed to bed in that quickly and seemed to, you know, get the service from their players and scored, I don't know how many goals it ended up being in the end, but she scored a fair few. There was a few games where she scored two, you know, scoring penalties for them, free kicks, open play goals. And that's, you know, that's what you need. You Being so young as well, Mia's shown and Ailey's shown that they can't do it, but I think she needed that little bit of just confidence boost that she can go and do it in, a, in an SWPL team. So she, you know... If, if she comes back to us, I don't I don't think she'll go back it alone because she really is somebody that we could utilise. But it's whether she's willing to sit on the bench when she's had that taste of first team, you know, playing every week. But I'm sure Joe will be able to, you know, sell it to her. Come on, stay here and you'll, you'll win things, that kind of way. But for me, I'd absolutely keep her. I'd keep Kayla Jordan. I mean, I'd keep them all, to be honest. I've got a funny feeling Megan Bell might leave, which is just going to break my heart all over again. Because she went out on loan and it broke my heart. But I just don't know if she's in Joe's plans, which is just a bit gutting, to be honest. But then it's the same with the likes of Lisa and, you know, kind of fringe players that we probably do need to move them on. We, we can't be sentimental. We have to build a really strong squad. So there isn't this room for sentimentality. We need to just kind of move on now, build, really build a solid squad. And, you know, a few people will be a bit gutted that their favourite players are leaving. But that's just the way of the, the business at the moment. If we want to be successful, that's how we need to be. Yeah, Wolf, it's it's a, it's an attitude I wish that the, the men's side would take on that sentimentality doesn't come into it. But you know, Carr makes some really good points. You know, there's 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 a possibility of Megan Bell not being here next season. Um, you know, there's Laura Berry and Kayla, Kayla Jardine at uh, Motherwell, there's Mason Hope at, at Hamilton, you know, playing every game. So there's all these youngsters playing. Um, it's obviously gonna be a, a big decision for Joe in the summer to assess these young players and say, well, we'll see, you know, I'll, she's got to make a big decision all these players, isn't she? Yeah, she is. I mean, Graham says here, Mason get the Hamilton player of the year. I mean, to me, that, def that definitely puts her in Joe's plans. You know, I mean, the, the word I've heard on Mason is that she, she is going to be part of the plans for next season. Um, I was told that by a family member of hers a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. He's, may he's maybe just, because he's related, he's maybe just kind of hoping because he's a blues. Yeah. But I mean that that would be brilliant if that was in fact the case. But as Carl says, there is going to be sort of squad players, if you like, that haven't played a lot of minutes, probably getting let go because the younger players coming through can replace them in the squad without costing us any money, or maybe maybe just an enhanced contract or whatever, you know, and there'll be more value to us in the long run because the way the way it's going to have to work is the, is the the popularity and the standard of the game in Scotland increases, they're going to have to start you know, the, the fabled transfer model, we're going to have to start invoking that in the women's game as well. You know, we can't we can't keep losing players for nothing. I mean, we're, we're, I mean, you know, we know it's all short-term contracts, but we need to start getting players on, young players on two and three-year contracts. And if they're leaving, make sure we get money for them so that we can replenish the squad with equally good players because we want, we want the game to flourish, we want the club, we want the club to grow. I mean, I think most people seem, seem to have missed it because it's not really been talked about since yesterday. But, okay, we lost out the league on goal difference. 
right? But the defending champions were nine points back and haven't got Champions League for the first time since European football became a thing for, for the women's mm-hmm. football. Right? Now, Glasgow City depend on Champions League money, depend on European money to even exist as a model because they don't have a club behind them. So mm-hmm. I would imagine they're going to struggle next season, which means that, to me, in my head, it follows that Rangers and Celtic are going to go further ahead of them. So it's going to get more and more like the men's game where there is only two big teams in Scotland. And it isn't going to be the team that have traditionally been the big team unless Glasgow City can find another way to, you know, to fund it. So it's going to be even more crucial to get a, get a decent squad. Because, you know, as we, as we said at the start, we've only lost two games and drawn four. The season, the season that we won the league, we've only dropped four points all season. You know what I mean? So it's getting harder and harder to drop points and still be successful in this league just because our closest, who's becoming our closest rivals are doing exactly the same. Now, hopefully the competition gets better because I think Hearts and Hubs are planning going fully, fully full-time next year. You know, and hopefully other teams will follow behind them. That that can only be good be good for the strength of the game as well. But at the moment, we're going to need to turn some of the young players around for, for cash if we can. So if we can get them in, like of Laura Berry, like of Mason, you know, like of Kayla Jardin, if we can get them in, featuring in the first team, either get them established in the first team, which saves us having to buy players in to replace them, or move them on for a few quid to then replace them with, with better players. That's the way the model's going to have to work. So, so yeah, I think I think Joe's aware of that. I think I think she'll she'll make that happen, but she needs the back of the club to do it. And from what I've heard, the Donald, Donald Gillies and what he kind of you know seems to say to people around the place, if he's as good as his one, I think that is probably what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, Carl, 12, 11 or twelve goals. I'm I'm looking at her stats, and I can't I can't quite decide which ones the goals and which is the assists. But eleven or twelve goals from Motherwell. So you know, in a, in a six month or five month spell, Motherwell, that's a a decent return, isn't it? It really is, and that's what she offers us. You saw it in kind of glimpses, you know, obviously there was the cup final last year that unfortunately she was offside for her goal, but you could see the run that she made in and the way she took the ball on. She was just no fear, so that seems to be what she's been doing, you know, this last wee while with Motherwell. Yeah, I've watched a few of the, the highlights in a couple of the games live, and you know, her movement is incredible for such a young player. She says she's got that instinct, that kind of Jane Ross instinct that she knows where to be. So if we can just pro- pro- get her in, provide her with that service, whether it be Kirsty Howitt beside her or Rio or whoever, Rachel Rowe pinging balls up to her test neck, whoever it'll be, she'll get goals for us. So it's absolutely somebody that should be in and around the team next season, just to give us that little bit. If, you know, Rio dips, if Kirsty has an injury, if somebody, you've got a proven goal scorer there on the bench that can come off and absolutely do the business for us. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Brian, just to answer Paul's question. Yeah, yeah. No, Alan's answered it there as well. Uh, Paul, we signed a five-year deal with, with Broadwood two years ago. Is that three years we've been at Broadwood now? Two years. Two years. Two years. Another three years to go. We signed a five-year deal with, at Broadwood, so we're there for the foreseeable future. Very much so. So, well, it's a cup final day Sunday. Um, Rangers versus Hearts. As usual, it'll be a Interesting household for you that night. Um, one will be happy, one won't be happy. Um, I'm thinking with the players that are coming back from injury that, you know, Rachel and Kirsty and, you know, all that sort of, when you throw that into the mix, I'm kind of hoping and thinking that with the big pitch at hand as well, we'll probably have a little bit too much for Hearts. Would that be a fair assessment? That would be my that would be my thinking of it. I mean, I would expect us to win and win quite win quite comfortably. However, as I say, one of our two defeats this season has been the Hearts. And yeah, I know mm. it was in a tight pitch at the Orient when we did everything but score. But if we go into it with the right mindset, I mean, remember, not only have we got to lift ourselves, those players have got to lift themselves as well because they were absolutely devastated yesterday mm. because it was so near but so far, as the as the the title of the pod says, it really was. Because we all went into yesterday thinking, well, it's over, it's done, and then we were minutes away from not being done minutes away from the taxi coming our way but yeah I think we should we should beat Hearts quite handily but putting my non-Rangers fan hat on for a minute I thought about this earlier on today I was driving to Inverness it would be very very nice to absolutely smash them but wouldn't but wouldn't do the profile of the game much good hmm. a couple of when, when the winning team wins by more than a handful wouldn't look good on national television in front of people that you try to entice to watch the game so Ideally, you want a you want a fairly competitive game that we win quite handily, a couple of goals early. Um, 
then maybe another couple in the second half to make it a comfortable win, but nothing ridiculous. Having said that, if we score 10, I'd be quite happy. <laughs> Absolutely. Laura, how, how do you see the, the game going on Sunday? Yeah, well, as well, see, they are the one, one of the teams that has beat us this season, but I, th- I think you look at Hart's recent results, they're already on the beach, so whether they come back for the cup final or no, we'll find out on Sunday, but I think we'll, the players will kind of want to get that second cup at least to kind of make it a better season than it as would be if obviously we'll go one cup, but as long as it doesn't, what happens last season doesn't happen, and they're that def, they kind of deflated after losing the, in the league on the last day, and then we also lost the lost it in the Scottish Cup, but that was against Celtic, so that's probably why. But no, I think I think we'll be all right. Scored a couple of goals, and as well as he didn't want to make the game look bad, but if we get yeah, a good few goals, then that'll do. Yeah. It's going to be a hard one for the players' card, isn't it? Because as, as Laura and Wolf have just said, you know, they've, they came so close in the league by goal difference and they haven't to put all that behind them and build themselves up for a Scottish Cup final. But there's no better way to sort of, you know, finish the season off by winning the Scottish Cup. I don't think it'll take much for them to get up for it, to be honest. I'd imagine they're all pretty raging at the moment. They were gutted yesterday and I'd imagine it's turned to anger at this point that they just want to get back out there and go and win another trophy for Rangers. For all that Joe and Jay have built so far this season, all the players that have put basically everything into this season. So I'd imagine, you know, and we need to build for next like next season Champions League and everything we need to build for that so I want pure ruthlessness I don't care about this sentimentality oh it's bad for the league go and absolutely batter them go and score eight nine goals against them and show that we can do that so that gets the confidence up for next season because I it doesn't look great for the league but hearts have got to the final for a reason so go and give it your best shot and we'll do what we can do and if that happens that happens I don't want them to take their foot off the brake because we're fighting off at half time that that's rubbish that no thanks Senior going with that attitude then, what's the score going to be? And a first goal scorer, Car. 4 now, me and Macaulay. Good. Anybody else in the comments wants to put your your uh, first goal scorer and, and predicted score for Sunday, please do so and we'll put them up. Uh, Wolf, you're always uh, some Rangers something, other team nil, so I don't yeah. see that I don't see that changing anytime soon. Well, I actually got yesterday right because I had that, I was accosted by PLZ's uh, sport soccer outside outside the stadium and they, they put a little clip of it out on Twitter and the bit they didn't put was my, my predicted score which I said would be 4 nothing yesterday so I'm, ta- I'm taking that nobody can see it they don't know well I told, said that but that is actually what I said but no I'm going to I'm going to go for like, like Paul, Paul's got the score score right I think I'm going to go for I'm going to go for 5 nothing, and first goal scorer is going to be Nicola Doherty Ooh, that'd be great odds, that. This season, so that would be quite nice. That'd be a great odds uh, bet. That the the correct result on the first goal scorer. That'd be some bet, uh, Laura. Three uh, 0 and I think Rio get back to goal scoring form. I think she will score the first goal. Well, I'm going to go. I'll go. F- yeah, I'm going to. I'll go three 0 as well as well with you, Laura. I don't think we'll. Run right over them. I don't think it's going to happen. And I'll say Kirsty Howitt first goal. So three 0 Kirsty Howitt. I think uh, I'm with I'm with John on that one. So I'll I'll go with that one. Hey, uh, Wolf, you put up this comment. Thanks, you bring Keith's comment up again because I yep. thought about I thought about this today as well. I've done a lot of thinking today because there's a long way in on this. Uh, the goalkeeper situation. Vic appears to take over as number one, which we've all said. It's widely rumoured that she's leaving at the end of the season, which we also believe is actually is probably going to be happening. Who gets the gloves on Sunday as Vic was the cup keeper? Or we thought she was the cup keeper. Now she seems to be the keeper. So, Laura, I think you said on your on your other podcast that you expect to be Vic in goal on Sunday. Do you think it will be? Or will, has Jenna reverted to being the cup keeper? No, I think Vic's still the cup keeper, so she keeps her space. And I think it would be weird to bring Jen out the cold when she's not played the last, what is it now, five, four five. five years? Yeah. So you're not going to bring her out the cold. And, well, you can't what she's like when she's not been out the cold, so <laughs> you're not going to bring her out the cold now. So no, Vic's a good big goals. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, Keith is 5 1, Kirsty Howitt. Uh, 
Oh, six. Paul's gone six, so he's gone even higher than some of us. So, so if if it is a cup double, Wolf, how do we assess the league? How do we assess the campaign? Sorry, disappointing because you didn't win the league. Simple, simple as that. Simple as that. Disappointing. Rangers are about winning league titles. Cups are yeah. nice. Cups are cups are nice. Getting two, getting two in the season is nice because last. You know, the last time we won the league, we didn't win a cup. The last time we won a cup, we only won one of them. So, yeah, nice. Nice to win two cups. Great to be in the Champions League. Gutted that we didn't win the league. I mean, well, you know, it's 32, 32 games that we go to every week. Every week, I mean, the, the girls go to more than we do. But, I mean, you know, that's what it's about. The bread and butter is the 32 league games. Everything else is a bonus. It's a bonus that you want. Um, as a manager pointed out, nobody's ever won the treble in the women's game. Hopefully, we address that next season because we're good enough to do that. We certainly should have done it this season. Uh, but no, without winning the league, disappointing season for me. Laura, would you go along with that, or is there, or you got a different sort of thought? I'll try and be a bit more positive. <laughs> <laughs> Dis disappointing to lose out in the league, obviously, but I think you need to put it in perspective. Joe's came in her first managerial job. She's going to have, well, going to have hopefully two trophies. She's got us back into Champions League after we missed out on it last season. So I think last season we slipped from first, basically, to third, and we lost the league and the Champions League spot. So she's came in and done really well. She's building a team that's going to last us, I think, for a good few years with the young team, with the young players and that she's bringing through. So I think there's definitely a bigger picture to look at. Donald's come in. He seems to have a really good vision of what he wants for the club I mean, on the women's side anyway. And I think the two of them are going to work together. They're going to push the game on as a whole and within the club. So no, I think there's lots of positives to take as much as it is disappointing to lose the league. But I think there's definitely positives that we need to look at and push on next season. We've got two trophies this season. We go for three next season and we're gradually getting better and better. Fair assessment, very, very fair assessment, Laura. So, are you in the team, Laura, or are you in the team, Wolf Car? I'm more team, Laura. You know, last year we won the cup, and then we thought we we're on our way. We we're going to win them all because we'd won, you know, the league prior the year before, and then obviously it was disappointing. We only won the one, and then we came third. So we've definitely built upon that, and what Joe and Jay have done since coming into the club, and then Donald has joined them, is just kind of completely turned everything on its head. When you think back to having Malky in the dugout and you complaining every week about the subs and everything, you think back on that and how she's kind of revolutionised everything this season. It really is incredible what she's done to be three minutes away, essentially, from a treble. It's just incredible, really. And as gutting as it is, because we sh absolutely should have gone and won that. It's, if not unbeaten, we should have won the league. So it's gutting in that sense. But to be that close to, you know, we've never won the Scottish Cup as a women's team. We've never won it. And we've never won two cups. So, you know, we're making history as, as rubbish as the history is because it's not the, the treble. We're still making history and this squad has definitely improved massively. And the attitude from last season with a lot of the players, you know, speaking to Nick and that after the game, saying this will not happen again. We don't want to feel like this again. So they're definitely going to be a massive shift next season, you know, in the sense that they have to absolutely go out and smash every game that they go into. So, you know, ultimately it's disappointing, but at the end of the day, they've done a massive job this season. And I'm not going to call it failure because it's not, but it's not enough for me. Brian, before I ask you the question, I agree with everything that they've just said, and also Alice put it a lot better than I tried to, that there is a lot of positives, but ultimately we had a bit winning leagues and we didn't win the league, so that's why I'm so down on, because you asked me if the season was a success, there's loads and loads of building blocks, the only way is up, as Yaz and the plastic population once said, um, that's long before, well before your time, Carl, just look it up, look it up. All right, okay. um, but yeah, there, there, there's, def there's definitely, definitely signs that you know, positive signs going forward. We've done really well. It's really, really galling to not win the league because we're yeah. it, especially because we'll see see if we'd come through from seven or eight points back and we are wet sail and just lost out in the last day. I'd be far more positive about how good the season was, but the fact that we're in the box seat and threw it away, that's just that that's galling. But I know there's extenuating circumstances for it. But I mean like Alan says it absolutely perfectly. There's lots of positives. Lots of excitement for next season. Like, I want next season to start tomorrow. 
I really do. Because, I mean, listen to Jill after the game yesterday. You know, she gave away stuff that she shouldn't give away to a certain other podcast. If you want to hear it, listen to their podcast and you'll hear what Jill said about that. Things that she said she probably shouldn't have said. So um, don't listen to it because you're not supposed to hear it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there is there is positives, but it is goal and we didn't win the league. So what's your, what is your assessment of the season up to now? Um, I think it's it's probably a mix of both. It's a mix of disappointment. It's a mix of being quite pleased with the season. Um, I think the manager, Joe, has done a really good job in rejuvenating the squad and getting everybody on on side and getting them all on the sort of same page. Um, but as all as you've said, you know, winning leagues is what we're all about and we haven't done it. So in that sense, it's, you know, you could put a, a, a mark down for that. But when it's our first job and our first crack at a job, um, to get two cups, possibly two cups in our first season, and only losing it in the league by a goal difference is, is yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't accept it at the start of the season, but when you look back at it in the cold light of the day, it's not a, it's not a terrible situation to be in. Um, I think her comments after the game are quite good in the sense that she's obviously geared up and ready for next season. She doesn't want to feel like this. And I think the players spoke to all you guys at the weekend and said exactly the same thing. They don't want to feel like this. So we've got all the young players, you know, we've got all these youth coming through. There's all that to be excited about. You know, we've got uh, regularly players getting called up to the national team, as uh, who was it, uh, Paul said earlier. So there's all that as well. And as, as, as we can say, the only way is up because we were second. So there's only one way to go now, and that's up to the top. So and, and as, as we've all said, we're, you know, we've played the best football this season. We just haven't, well, as the league table shows, you just didn't score enough goals. So that's that's the, the bit that you've got to look at, isn't it? And as Paul says, that's another positive. I mean, how often does it, the, the, you get a player and a manager of the season that was the team that doesn't win the title? Mm-hmm. But that just tells you how good the season we've had. Correct. Correct. So, although, as I say, um, we didn't win the league, there's a lot to be positive about. There's, you know... There's things obviously going to be done behind the scenes that we don't know about. There'll be players getting signed on contracts, players leaving. But it's as Carr said earlier, it's part and parcel of moving on and going on to bigger and better things. So if any of you are still wondering, the, the game is obviously on Sunday. So get yourselves, I think, the SFA website or selling the tickets. Is that correct, guys? So it's yep. still, there'll still be selling tickets up till kickoff, I would imagine. So get your, get your, uh, Get yourselves along and enjoy because I would imagine hopefully the weather's going to be really nice as well. So it'll be a great day. But we'll cross our fingers and our toes and everything for Sunday that Rangers get a cup double. And my thanks to Wolf. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Indeed, you will. Brian, on the, on the main rabble pod, I'm, I'm, I've got the dubious pleasure of hosting it tonight. We'll see Brian again on that. So happy days. Absolutely. And Laura, thank you very much. Thanks as always, Brian. Yes. And Carr. Pleasure I'll see you in 10 minutes too because I'll be watching it. <laughs> Excellent. So, you want to host it? No, I'm all right. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the men's team, thanks. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no. But uh, but thanks again, everybody in the co- uh, the comments watching. Um, it's been a, a, a new one for us, obviously, starting just before the men's pod. So, um, just try to get some more viewers in. So, like and share and uh, tell everybody about it, and we'll get we'll hopefully get the numbers up but my, as I say thanks to the guys thanks to you right, don't, don't forget next Monday night half past six cup final winning special cup yes, right, well ho- hopefully a cup a cup, cup double winning special we'll, we'll be doing next Monday at half past six so we'll see you then and have yeah, a do, great if week we it, if we do win it Laura's mission is to make sure it's sitting behind her next Monday <laughs> <The actual special>. <laughs> <laughs> easy easy mission, <laughs> impossible. mission impossible but my thanks again and we'll see you next Monday Podcast Network.